Welcome to bonding uh, hybridization or orbital hybridization. So, so far uh, in our learning, we've been talking about what's called the localized electron model. We haven't addressed it by that name because it's just the, the common way of electron modeling. Um, that, that model fails. Uh, and the, the reason it fails is what I'm about to draw right now. So we know that if we have a molecule of, say, I don't know, chlorine, we have a 1s sphere, and we have a 2s sphere, and then we have a 2p orbital like that. And then another one like that, and another like that, and then a third, and a third dimension like that. And those are the 2p orbitals, by the way. 2p and an x and a y and a z plane. Um, and that looks neat, but when you go and then try to bond chlorine with other things, you find that um, all the bonds are exactly equal in energy. And that doesn't make much sense. If electrons from the 2s subshell and the 2p subshell are bonding with similar energy given the fact that we know they're not of the same energy. That's where uh, the, the orbital hybridization theory that we're about to go through comes from. In methane, for example, carbon has, and I'm just going to draw this this way, these electrons. Now that would be a core level of electrons. That's core, so it's not going to react. But valence would be these guys, those four electrons. It wouldn't make much sense if these bonded as they are and somehow made bonds of the same energy with four different hydrogen atoms. That doesn't make any sense. So what we have to imagine is then this is atomic carbon. This is the localized electron model. When we bond to a different molecule or bond to a different atom making a molecule, this orbital hybridization of the valence shell cannot stay the same. Something has to change. So what's going to happen is we imagine that if we need four bonds, an example would be methane here, if we need four bonds around the central atom, and I just want to remind you, just this is our methane Lewis structure. This is not 3D at all, but we need three equal bonds to bind hydrogens and single electrons. What happens in this theory is that we take those four, we take those four um, orbitals, the 2s and the 2p orbitals, each that have one electron, or no, not each that has one electron, but uh, we have two in the 2s and one in two different 2ps. Instead of these electrons occupying these orbitals as they are, we instead of having these, we take these four orbitals, all of them, and, and the analogy is they are blended together, and then they make four equal orbitals, They're called sp3 orbitals. So instead of that, you have this. These are all sp3 orbitals, and in each orbital is one single electron. Okay, so this happens when carbon bonds. Um, this happens when anytime you need four electron domains of any type around a molecule, according to this theory. Each one of these would be able to overlap with the 1s orbital from each hydrogen atom to make methane. This makes a three-dimensional tetrahedral shape, 109.5 bond angled um, methane molecule. In this model, sigma bonds are, are the single bonds. Uh, and we'll show those in the next di the diagram on this page. Um, but atoms with four electron domains are considered to have sp3 hybridization. You might have noticed this on your um, uh, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory uh, guidance document we gave you. Um, and this is true even for water or ammonia, who have maybe have two bonds or three bonds, but they've got four electron pair domains. Single bonds are called sigma bonds. Okay, so this single bond that's in between carbon and hydrogen is a sigma bond. This is the diagram of the 1s and 3p orbitals becoming four identical sp3 orbitals with a bonding region, and this is called an anti-bonding region. You don't really need to know that, but it's nice to know what that little nubbin means. Your nucleus would be here. Okay, So this is in three dimensions, your tetrahedral shape. This is carbon with four bonding domains, and you can imagine hydrogen bonding those. You would get something, sorry, you would get something like this, where you have a hydrogen here bonding each one. That would be methane. Okay, so what about, oh, sorry, this is this is uh, ethane molecule. This is not methane. This is ethane. This is a little more complicated. Uh, all of these hybrid theories are going to be in uh, dicarbon molecules that have single, double, and a triple bond. Um, all these bonds you see are sigma bonds. This is a sigma bond between the two carbon molecules. 
here's a sigma sigma bond between carbon and hydrogen and those are all sigma bonds okay notice each carbon has four bonds around it these are tetrahedral in shape bound across one another now the little brown or gray nubbing you see is that antibonding region okay and you don't know what that is but that's why it's there we'll get into that in AP Chem Oh, it's also important to note that sigma bonds, sigma bonds form in between the nuclei. Okay, that'll become more important in the next type of hybridization. When you have a molecule like ethene, which is a little structured here, each carbon atom has three bonds: a double bond and two single bonds. Um, in this case, since we need three bonds, we're going to hybridize three of those orbitals. And so, instead of doing all those orbitals, we're going to hybridize these three and leave this 2p orbital as is. Okay, keep in mind the shape of the p orbital is this, right? So um, when we hybridize that, we're going to get this this setup. We're going to get 3, 2sp2, s and p2, which means 1s and 2ps. And then we're still going to have this 2p orbital left. And this is each going to have an electron in it, and there's going to be one here also. Again, this is carbon doing this. Um, this type of hybridization works uh, results in a trigonal planar uh, electron pair geometry with 120 degree bond angles. Um, again, the sigma bonds overlap head to head, and the electrons are right in between the two nuclei. The unhybridized p orbital, though, does something different. The unhybridized p orbital <clears throat> on each carbon atom are going to overlap above and below the plane of the sigma bond, giving a pi bond. Two electrons, one from each carbon, are going to be in a pi bond. And this is very different from what our, our imagination of a double bond that was coming into this lecture, so please bear with here. So we have a, two different pi, p orbitals that didn't hybridize. Each has one electron. And imagine this plane above and below that electron occupying all this potential space. Okay? Very different than a sigma bond that's between the two nuclei, isn't it? Because the electrons in the pi bond are not directly between the nuclei, a pi bond is weaker than a sigma bond. Double bonds are stronger and shorter than single bonds because they have one sigma and one pi bond. But they are not twice as strong as a single bond. Okay? We'll talk about that in a future lecture also. This is a graphic showing that hybridization of these three, but not this one. And so you get three hybridized sp2 in one unchanged p orbital. And in three dimensions, the carbons, you have three potentials for sigma bonds here, here, and here. And then we have this pi orbital here. And here we go in the third dimension, we have the pi bond. So we have a sigma here, a sigma here, and the sigma between the carbons. And then above and below the plane, we have this pi bond here and here. It's not, this is not two bonds. This is one whole bond doing all this. And that's why I love this graphic here. This purple space here is that single pi bond above and below the plane of the sigma bond, making it a double bond. And this is the entire structure of ethene. Okay, C2H4. Now, what if you had something like ethine, also known as acetylene? Those of you that are welders or will be welders need to know what acetylene is. It's a lot of fun. Um, it has, uh, each carbon in ethine has two bonds. I don't know why I crossed that out, but it's two bonds. One triple bond, one single bond. So what we're going to do since we need two bonds is we're going to hybridize one S and one P and leave two unhybridized P orbitals. The S orbital from each hydrogen overlaps with the other to form um, one sigma bond. Uh, the other sp orbital overlaps with one of the sp orbitals and the other carbon to form a sigma bond with the carbons. So you have a sigma bond here and in between the carbons a sigma bond here. Um, the remaining two p orbitals from each carbon overlap outside the plane of the nuclei and form two pi bonds. And if you can imagine, we can just in our brain imagine in the y plane we have p orbitals, but we also in the z plane going in and out of the page have a different set of p orbitals doing the same thing as the other. This, a triple bond is one sigma and two pi bonds, and thus it's stronger and shorter than a single or double bond. It is not three times the strength of a single bond, though. Um, the bond angle here, obviously, is 180 degrees. This is the hybridization. We're only going to hybridize these two guys this time and leave two, these two the same. And here we have one of the carbon atoms in an ethyne molecule. We have a potential for the sigma bond here and the sigma bond with carbon. It's hydrogen. And then we're going to have potential for two pi bonds here and here. This is the z-plane going in and out of the page. Here's our y-axis here. And here is the glorious drawings. Now, I love all these. I know it's hard and strange the first time you see it, but try to spend a minute with it and make sense of it. 
Um, here we have the sigma bonds only expressed. This makes very much sense when we just look at this. When we throw the, the pi bonds in, and that's this one here, we'll call this pi 1, works with this one and this one. And then in the z plane, we have pi 2 with this, this, and this. Two electrons in each of these, one from each carbon. So three-dimensionally, and this is why I love these drawings here, you have your sigma plane right here between the nuclei. We have a sigma from carbon to hydrogen, carbon to carbon, carbon to hydrogen. Then in one plane above and below the axis of the carbon-carbon sigma bond, you have a sigma bond, a pi bond, and that's the blue one here. And then in a different plane, we have another pi bond. Remember, this entire blue structure above and below is just two electrons. Same is true of the purple, above and below, two electrons. Triple bond, shorter and stronger than a double or a single. Finally, there formally used to be DSP3 and SP3D2 uh, orbital hybridization theory. However, uh, recent experimental data in chemistry over the last four or five years has shown that this is not consistent uh, with reality. So though you may see this notation on some of our, our practice sets, and it's actually, I think, strike through it or something, they used to use d orbitals to explain the, the, the um, expanded octets of uh, trigonal bipyramidal and octagonal uh, molecular shapes. However, data does not support that. So you will see it. It's not considered completely wrong, um, but the data doesn't support it as it currently is. So um, it will not be as assessed in any way. However, SP, SP2, SP3 certainly will be assessed. This is the end of bonding for hybridization. You should have taken high quality notes. Please rewatch this video as you need. I know you've got questions on this topic. Please make sure you ask them in class and start discussion topics with your classmates to make sure that everybody has opportunity to go over these new understandings. With all this new strange stuff, there will be questions. Please make sure you address them with us.